eight. I'm delighted to say we have Patrick Horgan with us this morning. Patrick, good morning to you. How are you? How are you? How are you getting on? You're uh, you're um, making some fibre deliveries for Virgin, are you? Yeah, uh, that'll be on the 27th in Patrick Street in Cork City. We're going to be giving away thousands of yours worth of prizes in uh, in boxes of cereal, basically. Very good, very yeah. good. That's the job. Uh, technically, of course, I presume you'd be prefer at that stage to be preparing for an All Ireland semi final as it would have been. Um, so, are you a good spectator over the last couple of weeks? Are you enjoying watching hurling like the rest of us? Uh, not really, no. Uh, it was a bit kind of tough for us the way we kind of went out. So, um, kind of trying to stay away from it as much as I can now for a while. And uh, maybe to the end of the championship, maybe the, the All Ireland final or something, it might have a peak at. But uh, uh, it's. it's it's a bit sore at the moment, so I kind of just try to leave it off. Um, you must have seen the scoreline when Tip walloped Offley at the weekend. And I know you're going to be reluctant to answer this for fear of the way that people might take it up, but does the championship structure make sense that a team like yours who were so close to going through up until the very last few seconds aren't in the championship when teams from lower divisions are then catapulted in? Uh, well, if... I, I, I haven't thought of it that way I kind of to see it like we knew before the Munster Championship started that you know the top three qualify and you're either in then at that stage or you're out um, how close we got like we're talking over days like because you know it was like a puck of a ball over the course of three games where it made us qualified but uh, yeah like for us we, we knew like what was the, the situation before it even started so we just didn't do enough to qualify and um, as competitive as we were like uh, kind of wasn't good enough from us like we needed to we needed to be better on uh, certain kind of areas and that's something to work on I suppose Is it more of a signal that it feels like the team is better now than even sometimes when they've managed to get through the qualifying system as difficult as it was that it felt like everything was clicking towards the right direction but just the competition was more fierce this year yeah um, like we were as fierce as it we were like as good as anyone in that championship we we know that ourselves as well like and the way we applied ourselves all year like um, I don't think we let ourselves down in, in any game over the course of the whole year so uh, that's something to be positive about going into the new year I suppose uh, before we wouldn't have got that consistency in performance uh throughout the season and I think the season just gone while we didn't qualify we were like pretty consistent throughout and um, that's like a, a really good thing that you can kind of say look we got we went through a whole season we didn't play we didn't play poorly or like dip our performance in any game maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes here or there but overall we were competitive through the whole season and uh, that's really good So that gap Patrick between your, uh, Limerick and the rest or perceived gap I should say has that narrowed in the last year or so like it, it appears Limerick I suppose everyone had them on a pedestal in recent years everyone said oh sure they're just a bigger team they're physically stronger men and all the rest but that gap seems to have, have narrowed looking from the outside in anyway Yeah definitely they were like they were like Really, they were unstoppable for a few years, but uh, there's no gap now. Like I suppose it's just coming down to, uh, you know, one puck of a ball, one play, one uh, missed pick, one straight to hand, one missed hand pass. It's it's that it's that small, and uh, unfortunately this year in two important games, like uh, two little things happened or a couple of little things happened in either game that you know swung it in the opposition's way and that put us out. Do you pay any attention to what um, pundits say? Like, uh, you probably have a bit of time now, as you say, you, you, you'll try and not maybe watch that much hurling, but do you, do you listen to the punditry and the analysis around games, maybe more so now than, than when you were a young, younger uh, hurler? Or? No, I wouldn't. Um, and it's not because I don't want to listen to the fellas on it, because they're obviously uh, really good at what they do. But uh, yeah, I just try not to watch because... Um, I just don't want to kind of have, I don't want to form my opinion about like uh, opposition or uh, what other people think like and you know you could be leading into a game then uh, against that opposition and you're thinking differently about them because of things you've heard and so I try to stay away from all that. The, the the 2023 you had like I remember you, you talking about the the decision to bench yourself for the All Ireland quarter final against Galway last year, um, and, and I suppose the impact that had on you and it probably gives you a kick up the backside as well in some ways. Like, do you see that as a as a turning point, something that's that's nearly prolonged your career in some ways, maybe? Uh, no, um, I'd always be kind of the way of 
uh, I'd be trying to improve myself all the time, whether that's like hurling or physically. And um, th- that was no different either last year. Like I applied myself absolutely th- the same way I always do. It's just, I suppose, um, you know, when you're not, when you're not, every player is the same, like and every player needs to be uh, confident and someone needs to instill confidence into them to, you know, that the people that are going to choose you to play have confidence in you and that's a really strong um, strong thing and that's one thing that we had uh, throughout the whole year this year I suppose everyone was everybody couldn't have a complaint with like I suppose uh, getting encouragement uh, from everybody else within the panel and um, that's a good place to be did the shape of the team change significantly this year as as the as the season wore on and even within games did you become more flexible as a as a group to try and get the most out of where you're strong um i'm not really sure how it happened um i just think that with a lot of uh, kind of new fellas you could call it onto the panel uh, early on in the year and they all started getting chances early on in the year and they started taking them and then there was fellas that were injured were coming back and all of a sudden like I think we had like two at least two per position that were really strong in that position and really putting their hands up to play so like that that drove competition within the panel then and I suppose it was every training session then was like look this is a this is a trial basically to get on the team and that's literally the way it was there was like 40 fellas uh, throughout the air just driving on and like you could have put any 15 on the field it did feel a little bit like the team got to grips with what the from a tactical perspective I, I want to go back to there was a league game I think against Limerick and uh, Limerick started lights out looked amazing but it felt like at half time something changed and um, you became more aggressive with a press as a forward unit and suddenly everybody was more in the game and it, it felt like the analysis afterwards was oh Cork wanted it more in the second half but then I remember I think it was talking to Anthony Nash afterwards like actually there was a subtle change there which allowed the forwards to be closer to the uh, Limerick players in possession and that unlocked something in the team did that happen? Um, I don't know possibly but on the night when you're playing or you're in a game like there's so many little things that are going on like you know do you actually push up and leave space behind or do you kind of fall back and hope the amount of passes that the defence have to take to come out they kind of uh, mess one up and sometimes it's just you don't do anything except just get a small bit more aggressive and I suppose just close down the ball it just sometimes like the opposition could be like so good I I remember uh, Limerick in the championship was it last year first game of the championship we were told we weren't we weren't um pushing up like uh, fast enough but we didn't get a chance to push up because they were so good delivering the ball you know uh, and other times then you'd, you'd push up and they'd drop the ball and they'd say that's great pressure but uh, it's all like it's all just bits and pieces that are going on in the game and that's just what it comes down to So it's not a trend it doesn't feel like it's um, something that you collectively worked on but it's more uh, situational it depends on the current I guess what I'm, what I'm asking here is that, like, you know, uh, it felt a little bit like it was on purpose that you were doing that, but obviously, yeah. 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 Well, well, probably what we were doing, we wanted to start off doing, and we just weren't doing it. So <laughs> that could have been the that could have been the reason as well. We probably got a a bit of a shove on to to get going in the game. Like we probably weren't in the game in the first half. Uh, but I suppose the the one thing we kind of put a lot of emphasis on like the year just gone like is uh, the just the effort that we put in like and everybody putting in the same effort and uh, just wanting the ball back I suppose and uh, after that like you'd be surprised a lot of things kind of fall into place like if you go about that hard enough you know it's funny, like you, you, you probably spend hours. You could read uh, column inches and and listen to interviews and analysis, Patrick, about about those things, the small details of 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 in game tactics. And yet, I suppose for yourself, when you're involved in it and, and and you're literally in the moment, you're probably on a different plane of consciousness in some ways. When you're in the middle of a championship game, you probably aren't really thinking about it's it's more reactive, is it? Uh, yeah, when the ball's around, definitely you're just reacting. But um, I think it's good sometimes to just uh, you know take a couple of breaths and realise like where you are and uh, the important things that need to be done at that time. And uh, you know you could be running around like a headless chicken for the day. Like, but I think sometimes um, 
you know, it's just kind of good to set yourself in what needs to be done next and uh, go and do it the best you can. Like there's a lot of young hurlers in that Cork squad this year compared to last even as well, and a lot of a lot more coming through when you look at the twenties teams and that as well. Like does that does that give you extra motivation in training as well? Because you, you kind of look at them and they bring that hunger and desire that maybe you would have had back in back when you were coming into the team at first. Yeah, as I said there, we'll go. Uh, like they all come onto the panel and they're training so hard and they're so like curious about how they can be better players themselves and. Um, like that's very strong like you know when you're on a panel of 40 and everybody wants to be better like so you you're kind of landed with you either want to get better or you want to go home that's basically it uh, and like they all were they all came in started playing games and straight away they just took to it straight away which is not easy to do either and um, yeah it's, it's great like training the whole year has been brilliant um, and it's just that's that's just a good environment to be in when you have 40 players that all are going into one direction and want to be as, as best as they can be. What's sorry? What, what's your role within that then, as one of the more experienced players? Do you feel conscious that you have to help them acclimatise, or do you feel that actually uh, you can't patronise them and say, "Oh, you need to do this, this, and this"? But actually, going out and just demonstrating. What? What? How do you approach that? Um, I I think we're all kind of uh, close enough, like um, that we all speak to each other and. Uh, I said there to someone yesterday that um, we've trained like say at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday Thursday night or whatever and uh, if you're not in the field by 6 you're late so that'll tell you the kind of level the fellas are at um, and I suppose when we're on the field for that hour beforehand like a lot of fellas talk and uh, you know you get around fellas in your own position and see what works for them what works for you and it's kind of a back and forward thing like and we're taking the nuggets, I suppose, from from each other the whole time, and uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's good now to, to to learn that way. Everybody, you know. And then specifically your role on the field, you were talking about everybody needs confidence. What gave you confidence this year about what your instructions were and what your role was on the field during matches? Um, I suppose for for me uh, personally, it was just um, you know, like. Sh- keep showing for it like there's only a couple of things you can do in your position that you always do and um, one of them for a full forward is like uh, showing for the ball take it on your man uh, closing down the opposition just probably three three things like that you focus on and then the other things like a ball will break till you pick it you hand pass it off or whatever like that but uh, you're kind of in the game if you do the, the first two or three like uh, Patrick, we're, we're probably blue in the face talking about rule changes and, and, and the state of, of Gaelic games in this country and the attack and mark in Gaelic football, certainly for one, and even the, the I guess the weight of the slitter, the colour of the slitter, all the rest. Is there anything in hurling at the moment that um, that you'd like to see changed or that you'd be unhappy with as a player? No, I think to be honest with you, no. Um, like you couldn't you couldn't touch hurling like looking at it, no. Um, and even the slitters, I know you mentioned the slitters there, and I was the first fella like to to give out mad about them there last year because they weren't they, they weren't up to scratch but I'm not I must say the slitters we used this year were a lot different and easier to use um, and they were actually they were they were fine weight wise or colour wise or both uh, I'm over the colour thing now like but I just the feel and how they how they fly um, are you know that they're important like how the ball flies when you hit it or like you know when you're guiding a ball like I found the, the old ones you couldn't guide them you didn't know what way they were going to go like um, but I think these ones there's a, there's a slight bit of giving them so you can kind of feel the, you can feel the ball on the boss when you're striking it and you can kind of guide it a bit better Must be important when you're taking freeze as well like that those little tiny minutiae of the, of the, of the skill set is is so important like you need to not to get all philosophical but become one with the slitter almost yeah, like you see, fellas, like how the way they the way they fly the ball, like so if they cut across it, I found like the last couple of years, even watching oppositions taking freeze, like from far out, they'd cut the ball, but when they cut it at the left, say post, it would go left as well. So like that, there's no confidence there in in any uh, slitter, like you know. That's fixed. You can cut it, it goes left. Like you're in big trouble. Like. And is that fixed now? Do you think? Yeah, the slitters this year have been really good. I have to say it. They don't travel as far, like, and that's fine. That was probably the the main aim of of them coming in. But um, I do think they were a lot better now this year. 
Um, one other thing that I need to talk to you about uh, we're, we're given to understand that uh, TJ Reid will continue to hunt you down at the top of the scoring charts until he gets there is this something that you're interested in or aware of because it, it's one of the great battles in modern Irish hurling history that you're definitely a part of whether you like it or not yeah, um, yeah I suppose it's a, it's a nice thing to be involved in like, isn't it Um a lot of scores there but um, yeah like he's probably he's probably one of the best players ever to play the game like and you know I'll battle it out with him there for a while if he wants and sure we'll I don't know what you know he's still carrying on he probably is not on a semi-final and final to play and it's good for him and it's good for it's good to be a part of that I suppose that's all 46 year old Patrick Horgan against 45 year old TJ in 10 years time <laughs> <laughs> he's actually older than me oh is he alright <laughs> so that came very that, you knew that very quickly yeah. <laughs> that's because that's because everyone's on about my age there's no one on about anyone else's age <laughs> so you've plenty of time left then yeah I'm alright I'm, I'm grand away uh, but the scoring thing does matter like it's uh, Ireland not great at this like paying attention to stuff until eventually somebody goes off and does the maths like hang on a second this is actually a really interesting story here you know two generational hurlers who've gone at it for a, the best part of over a decade at this point and we're we're privileged as sports fans to be watching this what's that like to be in the middle of? Um, it's good I suppose but the only reason I kind of want to be a part of it is because it means that in, indiv- in an individual game that I'm playing next I just want to score I just want to do like what I'm supposed to do and score so I don't really think I'd say it'll be a good thing to like look back on and say oh yeah that was like that was class at the time or whatever but at the moment for me it's like um, yeah I just want to carry on tipping around and playing and try and score what I can for the for our team uh, every match and See where that lands me. Yeah, like, and I, in a way, though, this one, I think everybody is allowed to, it, you know, it's a team sport, but ultimately, your job is to score. You're in the full forward line to score as heavily as you possibly can, and you have to be as ruthless as you can. So it's not like it's one of those, um, oh, I need to put the team first. You, you, by putting the team first, you are scoring. That's your job, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's, what, that's, what, that's what any forward has to do, really. That's his kind of primary role to, to score and show off the ball and win the ball and score. That's, that's, basically it do you find the extra little bit of attention Patrick on the pitch because of your, your scoring exploits as well like I'm sure we, we see examples of sledging in, in the game and at different points and it, it probably focuses in on you I'd imagine in the Cork forward line um, not very little actually um, I always wonder how footballers get the time on the fit, pitch to talk to each other but we, like hurlers actually don't speak that much might be an odd line here or there but it could be but maybe funny more than anything like I don't I don't ever remember like getting into any big conversation with you because know, the ball's coming too fast. You can get the ball from the goalkeeper now when you're on the full foul line. So if you turn to talk to someone, the ball could be there. Like, well, listen, uh, thanks very much it? for joining us this morning. I think you might enjoy the quarterfinals and semifinals if you could bring yourself to look at them. The, the game we'll is see. pretty good at the moment. <laughs> we'll see. Horan's fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> see. we'll see. Good stuff. Thanks a million. Keep scoring. Cheers. Oh, thanks.